Hi there, I'm Justin Waite and obviously this is my next video on, I'm going to be talking about this company I think you should do research on, and I mean that. Do some research on it, okay? Um, don't just look at what I've done and think, oh, I like that, I'm going to buy. This is not investment advice. I will not take responsibility for your investments, okay? You have to do that, all right? So you, by all means, watch this video and think, oh, I like that company, and do further research. It's an idea. Some ideas are good, some ideas are bad. In this market, pretty much all resource stocks' ideas are bad at the moment. That's the way it is. But, uh, so I'm going to talk about a company called Brave Bison Group, okay? Uh, first and foremost, what do they do? Essentially, they are a social media video company. So they have clients, they do their own stuff as well, but they have clients and they help. Like I said, there's a slide here, you can see the slides. Uh, they help creators and platforms to create, distribute and monetize video that's fit for a digital world. Here's some of the clients they have, some big clients. All right, now, This has been a turnaround story for a long time. It's been a serial disappointment to this company. I've got to say that before. I, I, so you may see a lot of bad sentiment out there about this company because there have been holders of this company and talking about it for a long time. And now it seems, after being on AIM since 2013 and going downhill the share price, I think we're starting to see the green shoots of recovery. Uh, but where sentiment is low sometimes, and people just uh, you know refuse to do research on a stock that's been a serial disappointer, a turnaround can be very good, can be very powerful. Um, in fact, Jim Rogers, who's a very famous investor, says he, he loves investing in hated commodities or hated stocks, you know, as long as they're showing signs of green shoots recovery. So some of the clients they have include like this, Shell, Procter Gamble, Sega, uh, PGA Tours, Marriott, um, Johnson Johnson, so big companies. And uh, they, what they do is they make it simple for these content owners, creators, brands, publishers, and platforms to unlock the value in online video. And it, it's done in very uh, different ways. It could be an ad licensed, uh, ad funded, a uh, direct c consumer. So there's different uh, ways they do this, okay? Um, at the moment, the business has two sort of operations. Uh, Europe is headquartered in London and Asia Pacific, which is quite a big area for them. And they have offices in Singapore. So, five reasons to add Brave Bison, that's BBSN ticker, to your watch list. This is just a watch list. This is what you put on and do some research on and wait for confirmation, maybe. It's not investment advice. I can't state that highly enough. It's not investment advice. Reason number one. Big market. The size of the market that we know social media is massive all right uh, just under half the globe uh, are social media users all right 57 percent of the world have mobile phones and this is where it's growing quickly social video is massive all platforms all platforms want you to create video it's better for engagement it lasts longer um of course google do because they own youtube but facebook obviously about a year back started a sort of a main a different kind of stream or tab there where it's just video only and uh, twitter do as well they all want you to create video all of them it works for them so this is where buff uh, brave bison are in and they do that for big clients uh, look at the traffic from video and of course, it has data, yeah, as you, you know, a bigger internet capacity is available. Data is not a problem. Uh, it used to be, but it's not now. Internet traffic, and obviously data and all that will get easier. Um, internet traffic from video, up 69% in 2017, up 80% in 2019. Hours watched, 200 million hours daily on Facebook and 1 billion on YouTube. It's a lot of hours. Massive. Massive. Uh, look at the market there. Social media advertising is forecast to grow. It's a growing market as well. 20% uh, a year and reach $54 billion in 2019. Online video ad spend, spends on ads, has increased 4.6% in 2017 to 5.7% of global ad spend in 2019, equating to $34 billion. So people are using video and they're using video to advertise as well. Uh, a big market is Asia Pacific. Uh, it's increased by 23.49 billion, 23.5 billion between 2016 and 2019. That's, that's the increase, accounting for 33, well, a third of the global figure by 2019. So it's massive. So that's why they've got an office there in um, Singapore, and that's why they're focused there as well as Europe. Carrying on with the big market, uh, listen to this. On the 6th of November, uh, Brave Bison uh, and he, uh, announced a distribution partnership with Chinese conglomerate Tencent. I don't know if you've heard of Tencent. They're big. 
They're one of the biggest, world's biggest internet companies. Uh, they're in China, of course, and they own WeChat, China's leading messaging payments and social media app, which is over 1 billion monthly users. Now, to get that kind of deal, excellent cash It's brilliant. You know, it's, it's, uh, to get a foothold in the Chinese market of that, Phenomenal. Uh, Brave Bison will be supplying Tencent with licensed video content from Western-based creators suitable for Chinese audience, opening up a previous inaccessible market for many content creators. True. Very true. Facebook not even allowed in China. So, you know, to get into China is exceptional. Uh, they're launching six channels and over 25 videos on the platform across multiple genres, from supercars to parkour, Brave Bison will regularly upload new content as Tencent platforms grow. Now, this is absolutely, it's a big deal. And the figures we're going to see coming up, you know, don't account for these yet. So there's no revenue coming from this, uh, I don't think, as yet. So it should get bigger and better. Uh, carrying on with the market. So how big are Brave Bison? They were na named the third... Uh, biggest digital media publisher in May. Okay, this is on Tabular Labs, independent sort of um, company, which is a leading global video measurement and analytics platform. So they had 4.6 billion views. This is just behind Time Warner and Walt Disney. Massive companies. So this uh, Brave Bison just behind these. That's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So they got penetration, market penetration. All right. This is what I like. When I was on holidays recently, I got the RNS from Vox Markets, and I read this RNS. I thought this is confirmation. I had a little, little sort of foothold in shares anyway, but I had come. This was confirmation. Trading update on the fifth of December. The board is pleased to announce that trading for the financial year, ended thirty first of December two thousand eight, is ahead. I love that. It's ahead of management expectations, driven by increased advertising and distribution revenues. Okay, this is the good bit. It gets better. Year and year revenues are forecast to deliver double digit percentage growth. So that's a minimum of 10%, of course. And full year adjusted EBITDA is expected to be positive for the first time. Positive EBITDA, there's earnings before um, interest, tax, and uh, depreciation and amortization. So, first time since the group was admitted to AIM in 2003. Not only that, they're generating cash. This is what I like. This is what I like a lot. They're not burning cash, not losing cash. They're generating cash. So on November 2018, the group had £5.1 million in cash and cash equivalents. No overdrafts, no borrowings. £5 million in cash. The group expects to be cash flow positive for the year, despite investment in strategic initiatives. They're making money. They're building cash. They're not loss making. They won't have to go back to the market. That's essential. That's very important. Okay? So they're generating value for the company. They're not burning value or degrading value. They're generating value. All right. So look at this. On the 30th of June, they had uh, 4.2 million in their interims, 4.2 million in cash. Cash balance November, 5.1. So they've, they've accumulated 900,000. Now, this is a turnaround company. So slow, slowly as it goes, but they're generating cash. So it's around about 80, you know, 180 grand a month over the year, if that's consistent, all else been equal. 2.16 million a year that's generating. All right. This assumes their revenue isn't going up. Now, we've mentioned the Tencent deal. Their revenue probably is going up. And their margins aren't improving. But they do say year-in-year -year revenues are forecast to deliver double-digit percentage growth. Uh, so 2017 revenue was rest uh, restated to 17.8 million. So if you look at this, they said double-digit growth. If we do 10%, which is the minimum double-digit growth you can do, uh, the revenue would be at least 19.5 million. And in the interims... Their gross profit margins improved from 28 to 32 percent, so up improved by four percent. So, how do we value this? Reason three valuation at 1.9 pence, the market cap of Brave Bison is 11.2 million minus the 5.1 in cash, and this values the business at 6.1 million pounds. That's all 6.1 million. They're generating cash, they have five million cash, 45 percent of the market cap is in cash. And this is, and now they're making money, this will grow. So if we value the company on a conservative 10 times yearly cash generation, 2 point, uh, which is 2.16, 21 million that would be, plus the cash, 26 million. And that's conservative. That is conservative. Like I say, you've seen you know, how, uh, how much penetration they get in the markets. They've done deal with Tencent. So I'm valuing this company, you know, one of the biggest sort of digital publishers in the world, at 10 times cash generation for a year. And that's assuming that cash isn't going up. And uh, assuming margins aren't improving, which they are, and assuming rev revenues are going up, which they are. 
So that's, you know, I, that's a de- they're valued at 11.6 minus cash. So, so it, you know, I think it's a, a decent valuation. Um, reason four, or the undervalued, looking at it right now. Reason four, new management. This is what's changed it here. So Claire Hungate came in as CEO in June 2017 from Warner Brothers Television, uh, where she's managing director. She was previously CEO of AIM Coded Shed Media, uh, and that was acquired by Warner Brothers. All right, She's brought with her... Um, Paul Campbell White, Chief uh, Financial Officer. He was at Warner Brothers 2. He was also Interim Group Financial Controller Channel 4 and Finance Director of ITV Studios. So, they've got experience, they know the game. This lady here, very impressive, non-executive director, brought in as well by Claire, uh, part of the new board. Kate is currently venture partner at investment firm Hambro Perks. Kate was also held a range of roles at Google during her six years at the company and was the first employee outside of the United States at Google. Before joining Hamburg Perks, uh, she was CEO of AOL Europe, following which she joined BuzzFeed as European General Manager. A lot of experience here. A lot of experience in big companies in the right space. Uh, also, um, Paul Marshall, NED there, um, he is a director of a multi-asset class family office called Vesuvius Ventures. Uh, he's also an accountant. I'll, I'll get into that in a bit why I've included Paul. Uh, so let's have a look what we've done. You see, the tri- revenue is going down, but this is because they're cutting non-profitable business all right they're looking at high margin business that will turn a profit so even though the revenue has gone down as you can see down here the loss is also going down and now to the point where of course they're becoming cash flow positive so they've turned the business around they've reduced a third of the workforce the headcount uh they're focusing on certain areas four million pounds of cost savings were made in 2017 uh and they're like i said they're, they're almost five million well over five million cash now no debt, no borrowings. All right. Uh, reason five, tightly held shares. Look at this. Woodford Investment Management. Now that's Neil Woodford, of course, star fund manager. He's had a bit of trouble of late. But he bought these right at the top. Right at the top of the cycle here. Because he saw the potential in, in video online. But he was a bit too early to the game. He does a lot. Uh, he likes to do cutting edge companies as well. But he was too early to the game. Uh, but he's still holding in. Invesco, another big holder. I'll go into that in a bit. There's Vesuvius. This Kevin's, uh, um, no, Paul's company, family office, they own 9%. So 62% held by significant holders. Um, not the CEO management don't hold as much as, as I'd like. They, they, they're new to the game. They just come in last year, of course, but they bought some in the market um, to show willing, I suppose. They don't hold a lot. But nevertheless, 62%, over 62% of the stock is held uh, tightly. Um, let's go into Invesco. Now, this is why you should never jump in on a stock straight away. All right? I've noticed in the last couple of days, Invesco is selling down. They've been selling down for a while, but uh, they've upped their sort of, uh, sort of frequency in the last couple of days. So look at the top here. This is a two TR1s. And originally, Invesco Holdings look held on the 7th to the 6th in June. They held about 19%, or just before the 8th, uh, before the 7th. They held 19%, almost 20% of the company. Now, of late, down to the 13th of the 14th of December, they've gone down to 11.26%. Uh, so they still hold, you know, over 10% of the stock, over 10% of the company. So there's going to be a lot of selling pressure there still. So I assume they're selling down to zero. Okay? And, of course, they don't have to notify below 3%. But this is where you can get your entry level quite well. Because whenever there's volume going through the stock, investors come in and sell into it. So for a while this share price will be nailed to the floor. Nailed to the floor. As long as they're selling, it'll, it'll stick there on the floor. All right? So, um, like I said, there's no point of rushing in. Do your research first. Plenty of time to do research. Uh, and then, you know, wait until you see these. Because every percentage of these guys sell, they have to notify the market. So wait until they're down to, like, you know, 5 3%, 4%. 4% and then you can start maybe scaling in. If you've done your research. It's not investment advice. I'm in too early. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. There's there's always opportunities. So let's look at the summary. Capitalization, you got 11 million pounds with 5 million in cash. Uh, Chart, let's have a look at the chart here. Just want to look at the quick chart here. Um, So BBSN, there's a chart there. Okay, so there we go. This is this big spike here. This is when they announced uh, they were the third biggest publisher in the world. And like you see, what happens here, you get your big sellers coming. That's a big seller. That is uh, Invesco selling down. All right. And it happens all the time. This is when they announced they're going to deal with Tencent, a Chinese uh, 
internet giant. And then all of a sudden, selling again. Reds, reds, reds. I mean, selling. Uh, every time it pops up, big sell comes in. All right? Every time it pops up, big sell comes in. So expect that to happen. So, you know, I'm looking to accumulate right about this level here. 1.5. Because if you look across here, from that level over here, I'm looking to accumulate 1.5 right over here. That'd be ideal. It may pop up higher, but I assume investors are going to sell into it. So, you know, you can pick your price in that, in that range between, well, it's down 1.2 down there. I don't know if you get that again. 1.2 and 2, 2, you know, you can get a decent, uh, decent price here. Try not, try not to, if, if, you, if you've done your research and you are going to invest, try not to buy at the top of the range. I try, uh, try a bit of discipline. You need a bit of discipline. All right. Uh, assets, very good balance sheet. Uh, in fact, let me get the balance sheet out. I'll show you right now. What's like on the balance sheet here? I like them a lot, and uh, like I say they got cash and uh, current liabilities, total assets, 4.1 uh, assets there, three million in current assets, all good in the hood. 4.1 in cash. I've gone up to 5.1 now, of course, but I haven't updated that because uh, I don't update unless I see interims or finals. Uh, I never update with trading updates, but um, that's impressive. So the, the, the assets are good. Shareholders are tight. I would like to see the management hold more significant milestones. Well, there's um, what is there? There's there's the financial results coming up uh, in March. There may be some news of deals or trading updates before that. I don't know. Simplicity. Yes, it's online video for clients. It's quite simple. They do three versions. They do some for their own their own channels. Uh, they do ad funded uh, videos, or they get paid fees to do them as well. Um, so that's good. Head on shows, very experienced, know the game, and they're turning the company around financially and operationally. So I like it a lot. That's um, Brave Bison, uh, BBSN is ticker. By all means, do your own research. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Uh, next time I do one, you get it straight to your inbox. And by the way, if you hit that little bell, the notification bell, okay, it'll remind you, you get a notification, reminds you when. Uh, I'm releasing it, and you get it straight to your inbox there, and it'll get, it come on your phone, I think. And, uh, and by all means, like any questions, please. Any questions below? Why don't we do that? And uh, but the most important thing is do your own research. Okay, it's your money. It's not my money. Your money. So uh, take responsibility for it. Do your own research, and if you can, uh, by all means, uh, share this video and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks very much.